May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So what do you think? Two brothers. Their father goes and asks, please go and work in the vineyard. And the first says, I won't do it. But later he changes his mind and he goes and works in the vineyard. And the other says, I go, sir. But he does nothing. Now, I figure he was probably watching a show or perhaps playing a video game and got distracted. I mean, it could happen to anyone, right? But then Jesus goes on to ask, which of these two did the will of the Father? Which of these two do you think pleased the Father more? Which of the two... I already said that. (laughs) Which of them will the Father be more pleased with in the long run? Okay? In the long run. And the answer is obvious, right? The one who actually did what the Father asked, that's the the one. And and yet, especially at the beginning, it looks like the second son is the good son, the one who pleases the Father. Appearances are less important than actions, especially in a case like this one. So Jesus concludes by saying, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. People who clearly don't have it together. People who clearly have problems, who have broken the rules, who have sinned against God and against other people, are entering into loving relationship with God here and now. But we all care about appearances. We want people to think that we have our lives together, that we are successful and worthy. So we dress in particular ways and we talk in particular ways Um, We tell cute stories about grandkids or pets, and we leave out the fights and the financial struggles and the lost jobs and the addictions and the mental health challenges that happen in every single family in existence. There are groups that have a different uh, set of assumptions In an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, people stand up and introduce themselves by name, and then they say, and I am an alcoholic. It sets a really different tone. They have a different set of expectations and a different set of shared experiences. And that's part of what makes a 12-step group so powerful, so effective, so spiritually significant. When you're trying to get your life together in the face of addiction, the support of others is very, very important. Hiding behind masks and appearances just gets in the way. One of my favorite authors, um, a Lutheran pastor and author named um, Nadia Bowles-Weber, speaks of the power of honesty and the power of dropping our masks to reveal who we are and what we are going through. She founded a church called House for All Sinners and Saints. And it's full of odd people with lots of problems. It's full of people with alcoholism and drug addiction struggles. Um, she says of her friends that they, that, that they are a cranky bunch whose lives are in various stages or states of repair. And yet this community that she describes is full of beauty and support and and the presence of God. Her story reveals the power of honesty, the power of letting go of judging others, and the power of supporting each other. These people... The people at a 12-step meeting, the people that show up at this house for all sinners and saints, 
These are the people Jesus is talking about getting into the kingdom. These are the saints of God. They are the ones who are entering into relationship with God and with each other. They are the ones who refuse to go into the vineyard and work, but later change their minds. They are now living God-infused, God-led, God-inspired lives together. And here's the thing. We keep up appearances and try to look like we all have it together, and yet every family I have ever known, and I would be willing to bet every family you've ever known has the alcoholic uncle, the uh, mentally ill aunt, the, the, the child that never launched, the, uh, the broken relationship with adult, an adult child or children that don't speak to each other. Um, these stories are common. We all have them. Your version, your story is probably different than mine. But you have a story, and I have a story. We all have stories. Last week, we introduced our stewardship campaign with, uh, that is based on the vision that on earth as in heaven, all are welcome, all are fed, and all are loved. And we handed out stickers for your car to let people know that St. Dunstan's Church is a church where all are welcome. And there's more. The ushers have them if you want one. Um, But how are people welcome here? How do we do that? On Tuesday night, um, we had a good example of that. We we had an incident that occurred um, that really illustrates how welcoming is done and how challenging it can be. There's one of our Tuesday dinner guests who's a regular. And Anytime she's here, anytime she eats with us, she goes into the kitchen after she finishes her meal and she calls out loudly from the doorway of the kitchen and says, God bless the cooks and the servers and especially the dishwashers. Now, I appreciate that. Terry appreciates that as well because we are the dishwashers. (laughs) So we get this blessing every Tuesday. Well, this week, towards the end of the dinner service, we heard some angry yelling coming from the dining area. And so I looked out of the kitchen, and there was Bill Barnsdale talking to this blessings woman, and she was very upset. She was yelling at him about uh, something. I couldn't exactly tell what she was upset about. Um, she, and Bill wasn't even the first person that she had yelled at. She also had yelled at another volunteer who was trying to help her earlier. And um, they had to leave the room and take a few breaths. She was having a tough night. And it was challenging. It was messy trying to welcome her that night. She was afraid that she was being cheated and denied food that others were enjoying. She was afraid that she wouldn't get a meal. But Bill listened to her. He created space for her to express her fear, to express her upset, and then he made sure that she got the food that she needed. It was still available. I talked to the other volunteer that she had yelled at, and they were okay too. They acknowledged that it had been upsetting, but they were okay. They had to leave the room and take a few breaths, but they got through it. So our guest was having a bad day. She was yelling, she was ungrateful, she was angry, and she was still welcome. She got the food she wanted, and on her way out, she came to the kitchen and called out, God bless the cooks, and the servers, and especially the dishwashers. When we strive for the vision that all are welcome, it can be messy. And we can do it. It won't be easy. It isn't easy. And we can do this. All are welcome, and we mean all, and it's our growing edge. It's our hope. It's what we're trying to learn to do better. It's what we're about. This is God's table. And you're welcome at this table if you're having a bad day. 
You're welcome at this table if you're ungrateful. You're welcome at this table if you're angry with God. You're welcome at this table if you're so overwhelmed by life's challenges that you're uneven, unable even to be civil with the people around you. You're welcome at this table if you are broken, if you're hurting, and if you're unable to recognize even that you're broken and hurting. You're welcome if you don't think that others want you to be here. You're welcome even if you don't think that you deserve to be here. You're also welcome if you don't approve of other people who are coming to the table. You're welcome here if you struggle with judgments or prejudice or resentment about others. We will make space for you until you can make space for God and for us. We just ask this one thing. Do your best to be kind. Everyone here is working as hard as you to make this work. There will be times when we disagree. Times when we get upset over something someone else says. Times when we lose our temper or become annoyed. And we're all doing our best. We want this to work. We all have our faults and our struggles. All our families have their stories. And we want all to be welcome. And so, remember, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, however you found your way into this place, whether you are rich or poor, whether you live in a tent or a mansion, whatever your abilities, whatever the color of your skin, whomever you love, you are welcome at this table and you are welcome in this place. There is food enough for all. Come and be fed.